let's see how the uh, Group B is shaping up and uh, what's left of it, basically. <laughs> well, what's left of the decimated remains of Group B? <laughs> yeah, JJ's done a number on that group. Yeah. Yep. Well, if I would have to bet my money on someone here, I would say JJ would go just out of the group easy, right? Uh, and he did it. So that's an easy So choice. you won that bet. That was oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> now we just got to find someone to take it for us. L yeah, Lothar <laughs> making the bet in, in the future seems pretty good. Just like, yeah, I would have gone for JJ, <laughs> so let's put the money down. But yeah, JJ is actually just one of the most consistent tournament players, I think, like exactly. just all around. But even looking at the list, I mean, Zyrez is doing really well to still be in because unfortunately this is no disrespect to Zyrez, but with JJ, Oskaka and Firebat in the group. He's the underdog. You, yeah, he, I mean, he's he just the way it way. is. Yeah, I, that's just the way it is. But he can still beat out Oskaka and get into tomorrow and join JJ out of the group, uh, group which will be a really big victory for him because I was saying earlier when we were talking about Zyrez that everyone knows he's good. He's very similar to like what Crane was earlier on. He's like very, everyone knows he's good. There's no question. He's a good deck builder as well, but there's just not been any like big tournament wins right and that's what every player need like wants to achieve just that big sort of like major win and, and then to really put their name out there he also has his trademark right when crane was patron warrior basically for Zyrus is the zoo yeah right so there's there's something to um, th that made him famous in the circles of pro players right so and you know who we're saying about last year oh he's good everyone knows it but he hasn't won anything yet oskaka yeah, and then he just became <laughs> the world champion. So, like, yeah, oh, still that guy. Time as yet. Yeah, that's correct. Well, he is um, playing today a freeze mage. We already saw that, right? Mm -hmm. we, have saw the, uh, we have seen the freeze mage. We have seen also Druid with Aviana, which is very interesting, but it died very fast, so we didn't see any other cards in it, right? But I'm, I'm kind of thrilled to see this deck again. Uh, any other uh, decks that you have seen were kind of interesting. I think he played Face Shaman, right? Because when I he think was, he did play Face Shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when um, he played JJ, they were like playing Face Shaman sure. against each other. So, yeah, I think that's just a straightforward deck. But the the Druid had like Yasha Arjun as well, right? So it's just like a yeah. full, super heavy ramp Druid, which I know a few players have been playing quite recently. I think Sotl's played a lot of the deck as well. Yeah, it's, it's one of those like, that's done the actually pretty good, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's one of those that somebody plays on Twitch, then the next day five people play on Twitch, the next day everybody plays on Twitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's one of those that's been around. So I mean, it'd be interesting to see how he made it to like top six with this. Yeah, game. yeah. I think he was one of the first players like post like Karazhan to actually play it and then really just post like good results with it as well. So it's definitely a deck that can get some work done, but also a deck that can be very heavily punished as well. Because mm. any deck that like ramps that high, if it's the I've seen very similar lists. I don't obviously don't know if it's exactly the same list as Skaka's running, but really the minion curve kind of just goes like Maya Keeper and then <laughs> six plus for the whole deck. Yeah. So it's like if you're playing something like that, it either pays off very well or you can just get decimated. But you know, we see the warrior ban out there for the Zyrez and then uh, Oskaka's Shaman banned out so Oskaka's going to be able to play his Warrior which is a like you know sort of a treat for us casters we right. don't get to cast Warrior that often in a ban format nowadays I was saying that in the beginning of the tournament I'm not surprised to see Warrior bans but, but as it unfolds and people get more information about the decks then the ban kind of gets yeah. get different right because if you have an idea let's say oh this guy is playing Cartoon Warrior, right? Then maybe you just leave it around because you don't. Your lineup might be better against that yeah. warrior than it would have be against a Dragon Warrior, for example, right? Or the ODK Warrior. So yeah. um, most of the time, the ban of the warrior is just because of the fact that warrior has so many archetypes. Yeah, it used to be like the old, um, the old like Zoo and Hanlock, right? You just had no idea what to mulligan for, and you just really dreaded it overall. Okay, and we are starting Ostkaka again. Is opening with his Freeze Mage against. The Zyrus Temple Mage. Take it away, guys. Have fun. Thanks a lot, Lothar. I am excited about this game because I love one of these mage decks, Lorinda, and it is not the Freeze Mage. So I know I you've <laughs> been um, fiddling around with mage quite a lot. Yeah, I I you're a hunter man at heart. I, I think yeah, I, I love hunter, but I really like just... I love hunter in general, but I really like Temple Mage deck. Um, I think it's a really cool deck to mess around with. I think I like it because there's a lot of ways you can build it. There's so many options. I think we actually briefly so you know the the firelands portal that uh, Zyrus mulliganed away so that's uh, one of the new cards from Karazhan it's seven drop or oh, seven mana spell should I say that uh, deals five damage to a target and summons a five drop it summons so a like random earth elemental <laughs> yeah that's what it feels it's the, it's the Huffer animal companion of, of really the mage is. world actually the card that I seem to have seen obviously it's all just personal experience but the thing I've seen come out of it the most that wrecks people is just Doomguard 
Yeah. Because when that comes out, that seems to be completely crazy. But the card's just good. Even if you just get a 4-4 from it, it's still fine. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how Zarus' deck is built because, like I said, there's so many variations. And against Freeze Mage, it kind of matters because a lot of the time when you win as Tempo Mage versus Freeze, you just just overrun them. You know, you want like Mana Worm early that they can't deal with, and then you just overrun them with spells. Use Flame Waker to start, you know, stacking up more damage and just make them not have enough mana to deal with your turns. And, you know, really just cash in on the, the tempo value of the deck, so to speak. And another thing we're seeing here in this, um, as it is the elimination game, these guys have already played each other today. Oskaka won that first match. Zero's had to then go and just play another world champion and, you know, beat Fire back to get the rematch. Um, but I think in these these matches they tend to favor the more experienced player not that Zero isn't experienced he's one of the, yeah. we keep saying one of the best known players around really yeah Skaka's got a few options there nothing's crazy happened so far the novice uh, sorry the oh my god what's the name of the card yeah you were, you were the there novice engineer right yeah you were there I get it mixed up with the 2-4 uh, the all the time the novice uh, engineer inventory man yeah that, yeah. that one Whatever. Uh, that was played and cleared up pretty easily with the Arcane Missiles, and now Zyrus is going to start piling on the pressure already at 20 health. Right, and this, like, this early damage is super important, and I was, I was going to say as well, like, Oskaka did have a valid option of actually just playing Doomsday that turn, and just saying you need a very specific answer to clear it up. Yep. Uh, but he did just go for the on-curve play of Cycle, which is obviously completely reasonable. Right, so now he has that awful decision you have to make sometimes where, do I... How long do I wait? Do I Doomsay a Frost Nova next time? Is it too late if I go that far and take another, I don't know, eight or nine? You know, or do I do something horrible this time, like Doomsay and Ice Lance and just stuff that you never want to do ever? Yeah, I mean, I actually wouldn't even mind just Ice Barrier Ice Lance. If, uh, the Ice Lance is the, is the key where if you yes. want to be hyper defensive, you play Ice Lance. But I wouldn't mind, like, Ice Barrier because there's... You know, there's only so many spells you can play on turn five, especially when your opponent's only got three cards at the moment. So, so like, Ice Barrier soaks up a good chunk, so you buy yourself a turn, and then the Ice Lance would maybe be a bit too heavy, because yeah. your opponent on his head, needs he, spells for Ice Lance to be a problem, you know, to be worthwhile. He has Frostbolt, he has Emperor Thor, and yeah. that with the Ice Lance is just giving up. Sometimes you've got two Ice Lance in your hand and a bunch of garbage, and you go, okay, I'm going to burn one to get through the game. But here, he's got the makings of a win condition. So yeah. if he keeps the Ice Lance, keeps the Frostbolt, keeps the Emperor, which is obviously the play we all see to start with anyway. Just, but sometimes you burn the Ice Lance here, you most certainly do not burn that Ice Lance. Yeah, well, they've been far too defensive. I like the Azure Drake here. Just, just no need to play like Flame Waker, get that down like Frostbolt for the extra damage. That can wait, because what I think is a pretty key ability when playing Tempo Mage is know when to hold back. You don't have to go just crazy all in and hope. You can hold back the Flame Waker and have like yep. a really blowout turn later on if you just don't rush it. And he had a really good play in the form of the Azure Drake anyway, so not too bad at all. Yeah, Flame Waker is an interesting card because the second you tell somebody don't blow in your Flame Waker too early, they hold it too long. Yeah. yeah. The second they hold it too long, you say don't do that, they play it too early. It's and one of these cards you've really got to consider exactly what you want from it. Yeah, this is insane as well. We just got to see the really, you know, the snap blizzard from Oskaka. But having three spell power with the Frostbolt ping that turn was huge. And what's the... F oh, oh that needs champion. an answer. I've got, I've got this a few times from port, uh, portals I've used, and it's yep. kind of ridiculous because... Buffs it's everything, like a, plus one, plus one, exactly. and ping their face for bonus for two yeah. mana. Yeah, and it's just like, it has to die. They, like, if you've got any form of board, it just has to die because the game just ends otherwise. So we see Oskaka actually just using up a lot of his burn just to slow the game down now. So there's no minions, but as we can see, Flame Waker, Sorcerer Apprentice, but never mind, we just drew Ragnarok. Yeah, the card that Freeze Mage pretty much hates more than any other card apart from possibly Doomhammer, Ragnaros. 8-8, eight, eight, kill you in two turns, take up all your resources if you're going to get rid of it. It's just horrible to face as Freeze Mage. Yeah, this is horrible. I think there's very limited options and maybe you have to just ice block Loot Horde, Doomsayer and hope you Alex Straza next turn, but there's no way to deal with the Ragnaros. Yeah, that's just going to be a well, it's done its job. I mean, if you don't kill it now, which, which you don't, yeah. because unless you do something whole with Loot Hoarder, shoot your Loot Hoarder, I don't even know what you're looking for. Um, Ragnaros just wins you this well. Sorry, it procs the block twice. And I hate saying wins you the game with Freeze Major because whenever you've got Ice Block, plus Arcane Intellect, plus stuff, that stuff happens. The cast go, oh, this could happen, this could happen. And the number of times it actually gets surprisingly close to, to saving the day, makes you not want to do it. But like you say, Ragnaros is just not fun and nor is just mage hero power to be honest yeah so oskaka can like just actually survive a few more turns if he wants to with ice block 
but it doesn't really get him anywhere, right? That's the problem. So he's not even going to bother playing Ice Block this turn, play the Emperor, and then try and do something crazy to recover. But a second Firelands Portal is going to be played. Gets a 3 3. That is, I think, the worst 5 drop you can get. And here we go. Manipulator. And we'll see if Rag goes face. Either way, is really a win. Exactly. He, you don't, he doesn't win the game, yeah. but he sort of doesn't matter so much. Yeah, although, you know, this. So even though Oskak is in a, a like really bad spot here, he has chain ice blocks, double loot hoarder to cycle. Yeah, this is the sort of one where Freeze Mage sometimes wins, and you're like, how? What happens? Yeah, but I think he kind of just needed Alex Straza there, um, to just uh, like even Alex Straza your opponent, so you can do that next turn, draw loads of cards, Alex Straza, try and play the other ice block. But the problem is Alex Straza wouldn't have been reduced. Uh, by Emperor, so you couldn't Alex Straza and Ice Block in the same turn. So Skak is in such a rough spot here, and I don't really know if he's got any, you know, good enough outs. But you definitely do play it out anyway. Yeah, I always play it out, especially when you are one of the best Freeze Mage players. I mean, Oskak has played Freeze Mage since Oskak began. Yeah. And he, you know, he's shown time again at massive, massive tournaments, you know, like, like World Championship styles, that he can play this deck incredibly well. Yeah, double loot harder does come down. Hopefully, for Oskaka, he'll want the Ragnaros to hit one of those, but they can just be cleared up and a guaranteed block. Uh, because with Ping and just trading the 3-3 three, three in, you prop the block at 8. And, it, you know, Zyrus has options to even prop the block lower. I mean, look at his options here. He can Flame Wake into more draw, even play the Swords of Apprentice if he wants to. So he's just going to go for the guaranteed um, proc here, which makes a lot of sense when you've got something that's doing 8 damage a turn. This damage is accumulating, by the way, in um, Oskaka's hand. It's probably too late, but he has got now a giant amount of damage just, just you know, sneaking along there. Yeah, and I really like the play from Zyrus to just uh, oh. play the Summoner because it, the Flame Waker is something to keep hold of because you can guarantee the proc one damage uh, and you, you don't need to drop the Flame Waker. The Summoner gets you more value on the board and he's more difficult to remove with cards like Flame Strike. So I like that. And he even got the Silent Knight, which is even more resilient to any board clear anyway with Stealth and Divine Shield. But Alex Straza, I mean... One mana off winning the game. Yes. Alex Straza into block would win the game. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. down to 15, the next turn easily do 15 with that hand. Um, but he can't do that. So he's got to look for creative ways to win this game. And the thing that separates the best Freeze Mage players from the people who know what they're doing is finding something creative. But I'm not one of those best Freeze Mage players. I can't see anything creative at this point apart from I mean, Alex, your own face. Yeah, he's just going to go for the uh, go for the aggressive Alex. I th so I was I was just sat thinking then while, you, while you're talking that if you Alex yourself and do like Ice Lance play like this, like, can you actually survive and do enough damage? And I don't think you can. So I like this play from Oskaka. Just go for the aggressive line and say, if you don't yeah. actually kill me, I've got a very, very good chance of just taking you out. Yeah, he's found a way to possibly win the game, if he survives the 50-50, but he's given himself that 50-50. Except he now, just kill Alex anyway, bad guaranteed. things are going to happen to this Alex now. I mean, the odds on it dying, I think, are very, very high here. There's five five shots to go three damage. Or you just have Arcane Missiles just do the job the regardless and finish the ever. game up. But in fairness, yeah, that was a long shot was Oscar. But again, finding a way there to give himself a top deck for lethal. Yeah, and that's why Freeze Mage is one of the, like, probably one of the most intricate and complicated yeah, decks to play because uh, you do have the points where you know, need to know your exact outs and just go all in on drawing those. And that's how you win. And identifying them is actually very difficult. You get in weird situations like that, where that looks strange for Skaka to use like a lot of damage in terms of the Ice Lancers, just to stall out yep. and try and survive. But that was the only play to actually win the game and not just survive one more turn and, and die. And there's so many levels to Freeze Mage. Like when you first pick up the deck, you look at your opening hand, you mulligan it all away, and you look at your next card, you, you want still to don't know what that to away. Do. <laughs> and you play seven or eight games, you're 0 and 7, you're like, these cards can't win me a game of Hearthstone. Yeah. And then you progress to the point where, you know, most people are at, which is where you know what you're doing, you're going for the extras, you're getting a block up, you're doing 15 damage, blah, blah, blah. And then there's these guys, and they're just insanely yeah, they're good just at finding, scary. hey, if my opponent can't do this, I can win the game by doing this. A bit like Rogue. Rogue players have got the same mentality of, I'm going to find a way to build a board. Yeah, but we'll see no Freeze Mage now for Oskaka as that uh, deck has been removed, and Zyrus has won with his... Tempo so, mage. so he's got Tempo class? Mage versus Warrior. Tell us what this class does. It's uh, been recently released in Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Warrior class. It's been recently unbanned. Um, this class does many, many things, uh, Lorinda, and that's why we see the ban so heavily. Uh, you know, I think a few of us discussed it throughout the day. There's so many variants, and they're all 
quite powerful in, right. you know, de depending on your lineup and what you want to accomplish. If you said you can take one class, yeah, like, and you've got to play, you know, whatever you want with that class, whenever you want, you would pick Warrior today. Yes. More than likely, because you have so many different options, you yep. can do, you accomplish anything. And this appears to be a very cycle-heavy deck. It's got the uh, the pyro clear, and it could still. Do you know what this deck is? Have we so seen, have we, we, not we seen don't know what it, we Warrior. haven't seen a Warrior since yeah, yeah, yeah. like 2015. So exactly. So it's going to be either one turn kill Worgen or probably Patron, with one way or the other. Yeah. There's also Cycle Cthulhu, right? So yeah. There's Cthulhu Warrior is very cycle heavy, really one. powerful as well. So we're going to discover as we go, uh, and we will find out exactly what Oskaka is playing. But Zyra's on the Temple Mage got a pretty good start. You, you know, Sorcerer's Apprentice is such a you know a high threat card against anyone, and having those mirror images to guard against that Fireworks is pretty huge, as we see now. The two drop, or probably the most powerful two drop in the game in form of the Fireworks, is kind of negated by these. And look Fire at this one start drop. I don't think there's any other one drop you'd ever consider negating a Fireworks with. And like you say, this start from Zyrus is looking pretty tasty. And look at the damage. And this is why, like, Tempo Mage, again, depending on how it's built, can be very flexible in terms of it. A lot of the time it can go the long game with cards like Ragnaros, uh, you know, Summoner, even uh, Torch, because it cycles into a, you know, a cheap Fireball later on. But it can also just murder you within five turns, and but even against Warrior. So this is why it's called Tempo Mage, because this bit we're looking at now is like the old engine of the deck that was actually a Tempo Mage. Yeah. This it's bit is like the remnants of the Tempo Mage deck. Yeah, when your opponent does more stuff than they should be allowed to do, it's right. tempo. <laughs> like that's that's my easy explanation of like tempo overall. But current tempo mage after turn five turns into sort of grinder mage after my kind of mage, double tone mage. Wow. Yep. But the pyro was not able to fully clear the board, but helped clear off the apprentice. So really reduces the uh, you know the, the what Zaris can get out of his turn. But he still has the mana worm. That's a pretty big threat. Can just choose to just ping off the two one. Oh, sorry, he pinged off the Pyro, of course. Yeah. So we're still seeing just this Pyromancer Battle Rage engine that, like you say, people did put it in Cthulhu. I think it's getting less and less likely it's Cthulhu because we've not seen any minions at all. But people suddenly realize, hang on, we've got this really good card draw engine in Warrior that we can do any control that we like with. We just have to make some concessions, cut out one or two bits and pieces. And we didn't like those bits and pieces anyway. We don't need those. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're seeing more and more now. I oh. think it's Cthulhu. Yeah, so um, people basically, uh, so players pretty much discovered that Pyro plus Command and Shout is an obscene combo. And you can just clear stupid amounts of board with that, you know, as well as chaining other spells. Yeah, and why cars. didn't we spot it earlier? Why didn't nobody spot this earlier? But people um, have tried, like with Patreon, they tried every combination of those cards, and somehow nobody just went, oh, this is silly. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And so this, um, the difference between this Cthulhu Warrior and I'd say what's now swiftly becoming old Cthulhu Warrior, because yeah. this is becoming yeah. just the, the common deck, is that instead of doing all the tanking up and, and the big minions and all the armor gain, it pretty much just cycles to Cthulhu, plays Cthulhu, then like Grand Doomsay, uh, sorry, right. Doom Caller into two more Cthulhu's and then you just win. So it works kind of like in an OTK style, but you play it just over a couple of turns because of like the cycling Cthulhu. And anyone who's played against Cthulhu Warrior, sometimes your opponent does just, they look like they're playing badly, but they just go, here's Disciple, here's another cultist of some sort, here's another one. And suddenly you're facing this army of like vanilla looking minions. They're, they're hitting you anyway. Just every now and again, you're sitting there going, please no Cthulhu, please no Cthulhu. Well, if you can draw your Cthulhu this quickly, yeah, exactly. The please no Cthulhu prayer isn't answered very often. Yeah, the only worry for Oskaka is it may be a bit too quick so far. He has got a lot of cycle in the deck. Almost all of the deck is cycle. But he has got a few turns so he can play Cthulhu. And what's worrying as well is he hasn't drawn any more Cthulhu activators. Right. So this shield bear is literally just a 7 mana 6-6 six, six, as it won't be able to activate the plus 10 armor that is the, the bane of my existence. I'll tell you that for nothing. Right, I'm sure that as a, a generally an aggressive player, you hate 10 armor. Yes. <laughs> it's just Armor's not your cheating fan. as well as taunt. Wow, just just stretching the cheat lines. <laughs> as we see, Oskarka starting to get into this, but 19 health already with Firelands Portal, Fireball. That's a lot of burn for Torch as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing, that's like the flexibility of Tempo Mage. You can use the burn for like removal to just to keep your minions alive. Or you can just go face with it and, and kill people. And the there's another portal, portal and the intellect. If he ever runs out of burn, just... Ooh, okay, wow, six princess. five, you'll take it for that. Yeah, so you're at home now, right? You're hitting a hunter with six five hunter cards. Exactly. Hitting a warrior, this, even. This just, this just feels right in every way, Lorinda. Okay, so... <laughs> 
Ravaging Ghoul into Cultist into Execute. Warrior doing the thing that he gets banned for doing a lot. Um, but now Zeres is in a position where he can start doing some numbers and wondering if he can just burn out here. Yeah, and then, as I said, because Zyrus knows that the Cthune isn't at 10, he doesn't have to fear the shield bearers yet. So, you, you, you know, a very realistic plan is to just go very aggressive with the burn. But I think we're going to see the Arcane Intellect first, unless he values the portal again. You know, just to put another minion on, but... Oh, it looks like he's going for Torch. So the Torch is the one you like, don't mind. Okay. Oh, okay. That's an interesting sequence of events. And it worked for him. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. If you're going to Torch, then just draw the Roaring Torch. I think that was the plan, fine. though. That's why he thought about it. Yeah, that's that's really interesting, actually, because that just shouldn't be a high chance. But I suppose if you're always going to feel like you want to remove the minion, yep. you can give it a whirl. And now he has... Well, you're drawing two cards plus a card next turn. That's three. Your deck's probably 20. Yeah. It's about one in seven. It's a thing that it's will pretty happen. pretty reasonable. Now we see an 8-8 Cthune. Why not? You know, Iskaka wants to get it on the board so he can cycle and also just do eight damage. And it's an 8-8, so... Cyrus really has to think about this now. How much damage can he afford to take? Yeah, this is a bloody matchup. Um, Cyrus may be working out, if I deal with this board, have I still got enough, like, gas to win the game? Yeah, and I... And he probably has. How do you feel about Ragnaros here? I actually, I was just about to say I like Ragnaros because... Worst case scenario, you hit the 2-3, and then yeah, so that's you, the you kind of cry. That's, yeah. that's the lose. If you kill Cthune, great. You, you've saved 8 damage and Rags on the board. If you go face, you've got fireballs, and there's the Whoa. face in. So, so two Cyrus, wins one lose there. Well, Cyrus just try. has lethal next turn, unless there's armor gain somewhere. Like, more armor gain than the hero power. Sure. Because he can play the, uh, the sorcerer and then just Fireball, Roaring Torch, and win. So Oskaka has to draw, and now he's just doing a one draw. He can now command in Shout. He needs cards like Shield Block. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's in Oskaka's sure. list, of course, but I imagine because Shield Block seems like a good cycle card to me, it's probably going to be in there at least a one-off, but this is really tough. Another Cultist would help him as well, because he could play the 2-3 and then gain 10 armor, and yeah. buff his Cthune, run that into Ragnaros, and suddenly he'd look good again. Yeah. So that's another, you know, just, just a river I mean, he like, Ragnaros is dead because you just run the 2-3 and then execute, right? So that's just fine. But you'd yeah. rather not have to. Oh, oh there's it's... Disciple of Cthune. Uh, uh. I mean, this seems fine. Execute zero. There's, how many more sure. execute targets are in Tempo Mage? Like, not that many. No, no one really plays Art Mage anymore. So, if he armors up, that's 14. He's going to need one missile to hit face. No, he's just dead. Have I miscounted? Yeah, because the spell power. Sure, I yeah. miscounted. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, he's just dead. If he didn't, if he didn't armor up past two, that's just game. Look at that, taking Zyrus to two. But here we go, Cult Sorcerer straight away, and it's gonna be the torch. And that, you know, what? he drew the torch straight after playing the first one, and he chose, that, and then to yeah, play it in order. Into it. And I am sure that somewhere in a chat room, somewhere out there, people are saying wrong order, wrong order. Yeah. The audience won in the game. Yeah, I mean, Zyrus really identified that he, again, I think the key was Cthune not getting buffed, right? Yeah. Because if he made that play to burn and then just Bran and that, you know, it comes out, then it's just like, well, that's just game. Because all I have is burn and I can't deal with this kind of minion pressure combined with all that armor because he'd already seen Emperor. So imagine at that turn, if you'd seen Emperor and Cthune was 10-10. You'd, sure. you'd cry yeah, the whole thing changes Bran and, so you know, you, Bran and a shield bearer, even just a shield bearer would have been enough to keep him up easily, but Bran's shield bearer just ends the game. So and I really, think that's really how Winkley was designed. Players. It was supposed to work. Like, sometimes you just get like turned over by your own minions, they don't turn up. Yeah, you play the risk. But it's it the same of any synergy, right? It seems right? to happen so often that they do buff the Cthulhu, like, much more often, I think, than anyone originally thought, that yeah. it's just so playable. And now we're going into... Oskarka has played the deck he thinks is the best, so it's that last hero standing thing again where suddenly the guy who's 2-0 up, apart from obviously being 2-0 up in a best of five, <laughs> has more than that as an advantage because he gets not only... He's beaten the counter, but he gets to pick his own counter next as well. Yeah, I mean, Oskaka actually uh, has the ramp, though, in this game. And this, uh, you know, if you guys didn't see the games earlier, Oskaka is playing, a, like, a ramp druid of old. To it's, an like, absolutely... It's like ramp druid nuts. on, like, uh, just doubled up. It's crazy. Um, it does play Yasharaj. It does play Barnes as well, of course. Uh, Everyone's favorite new card to hate. 
Yeah, but, but also, you know, he's kind of interesting here. Oskaka has the ramp available. He has Wild Growth, and then he has Innovate into Coin. Doesn't have the big minions yet until now when we see Ragnaros come out to play. But Zyrus has a very slow start himself. There we go, just having a quick... Just reminder that this is this, this is, is the Insomnia True Silver Championship, if you didn't realize. And this is Zyrus versus Oskaka. This is a qualification match to top eight, and Zyrus is 2-0 up. Right, and oh. Oskaka choosing between three fairly unpleasant choices. I imagine to take the Starfall, that's not so bad with the mana he's going to have available to him. Yeah, and the fact that Zyrus hasn't played anything yet, means that Zyrus' hand is late, right? You know, like, th there's probably the minions or the spell heavy. Yes, if, yeah. So, Starfall, one, being blatantly better than the other two cards, but also you're pretty confident that, you know, you've seen yeah, there's, there's only so many Drake's, cards. There like, be. even, you know, uh, Starfall on a Flame Wake is good, right? You just want to remove it. So, a lot of options for the Starfall there and the fact it was just better in general, but... Zyrus managed to get down the Cult Sorcerer and Oskaka having pretty much all the options in the world. I like Nourish into Ramp into Wrath. So it's a... Nourish is one of the hardest cards in Hearthstone to play because it needs you to work out all of your future, not just what you're doing now. I just yeah. had a quick chat with Life Coach about various things with Druid as well, but Nourishing for cards is obviously good. You get your cards now. Nourishing for mana puts a certain amount of faith in the future. Yeah. But in this deck, okay. I think the future's... I mean, big. the deck is super curved past six. It's ridiculous. Like, if you look at it, the deck list, the six drop starts like a quarter of the way down the list or something. Right. It's like, it's really crazy. If it's the similar list to what Which I've seen is, before. I mean, it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense yeah. that it would be. But like, I'm, so I'm, my worry is one of the other options is to just go into Rag this turn. But if Rag hits face, it doesn't accomplish too much. But then with spell power down on the mage, you know, it could get like double arcane blast. And you know for a fact the mage has cards in his hand that he doesn't want to play. He's not played. So, yep. you know, one of those, a uh, direct burn damage. So, so looks he like does he is going to go. I like get this the wrath to clear. And now, yeah. next turn is at worst Ragnaros. Like, worst is like swipe and feral rage. But it's probably just Ragnaros. And yeah. after that, he will draw at some point a minion that costs more than, yeah. There you go. I mean, he's Here we go. pretty good so far. He yeah, could he even Sylvanas innovate swipe, but if Rag hits face, that Rag's dead to two one mana spells. Oh, it does kill the Azure Drake. Okay, so a little bit safer as there was two Arcane Blasts in hand, as I said earlier. So that would have been scary, but now Oskak has got a pretty good feel for the This is a good, good pick board, up now. here, though. This Sorcerer's Apprentice is going to allow Zeros to do pretty silly things. Do whatever he wants. Yeah, I do think whatever the, the he wants. end of that like, sentence. This is like some adventure mode thing where it's just like, just, just solve this small puzzle and destroy your opponent. And yeah, Balsh. Interesting. What do you think about the use of the Frostball over the Arcane Blast? Yeah, I think that's good, but he'll get to use the Arcane Blast on some things later because you want to get... You don't want to overkill it by as much as possible, whichever way you should word that. Uh, so the extra point of damage he can do later may be important because this mage deck, this this mage, this green mage, this druid deck, <laughs> this does have a lot of health mage. to get through. Nature yeah, mage, but I think, mage I think as well, I think as well the uh, having as your Drake and then arcane two arcane blast is just another way to get through like a heavy ramp deck, right? There's so many big minions, you just want that double spell power from the Arcane Blast, but Zyrus now can easily clear up Sylvanas, so there's another one he doesn't have to worry about, is that Sylvanas can be quite pessimistic. Not having again. the accident that was waiting for some people there, where they Firelands Portal with Sylvanas. Yeah, and it's like, ah. Uh, it works <laughs> like, like that, and I lose my minion. No. Pretty confident Zyrus is a good enough player <laughs> not to make that mistake, but now he does have a Mana Worm on the board that can be cleared up by Oskak if he really wants, but it means he would use a Foul Rage on a 1-3, which, yeah, Mana Worm could get out of, out of control, but do you need to Foul Rage it? You know, are, are you that scared? You're now in this position where you just make huge minions every turn because you've drawn so many spells. We're just going to draw lots of Ancient of War and equivalents now, I think. Yeah. So I think you just play it. And do you uproot, Rinder? <sighs> Do, Do I uproot? I saw how that turned out earlier. <laughs> Which was the right play in that position, yeah, by the way. Yeah, it was. So how it turned out earlier. I don't, I don't like uprooting. Right. Doesn't make too much sense because you know there's still probably more burn in hand and you could play enough spells where the mana worm just kills it itself. <laughs> and Fireland's Portal is a card, which is definitely scary. So we will almost certainly not see an uproot as Oskako. Yeah, and he keeps the Fell Rage. I think you want to try to save this Fell Rage for armor in this match yeah, because agreed. you don't want to have an accident where the mage just burns you out. It shouldn't have. You're going to have all these 10 health taunt minions that you're dealing with, so 
you're you're starting like 60 health or something. But just in case, you, should, you keep the throw away for the next for the next yeah. eight. That worked out pretty Ouch. well for Zyra as he cleared up the Ancient of War and then just dropped a pit fight onto the board. And I like that minion just because it's just a good stats. It's just a beefy minion. Wow, I thought I was the stats guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm allowed to be now and again, Lauren. Sure. I'll start playing Hunter. Okay. Deal. And yeah, Zyra's doing all that he can do now, which is build up the board and hope that um, Asira Awakens doesn't come out of Asira anytime soon. Yeah, there is options here, though, is trying to work out how good a combination of Starf uh, Starfall and Swipe would be. It's still living roots as well. That wouldn't be too bad, actually. That would just... Because this is doing good work, you don't mind being a little bit inefficient, I don't think? Yeah. I think, well, I think the idea is... Zyrus can only have so many more minions left, right? You know, his hand is, like, you know, go, yeah. uh, really reducing down. Only three cards, and Oskaka will know he's held those cards for quite a long time, so they're probably situational. So if you can clear this push off, you're probably feeling pretty likely... Yeah, the, he's not going to burn you. Not, he's not going to refill. Yeah, that he needs and, to do and kill a server. And he's not probably not going to refill the board with another like three, four to five drops. You know, you, you can only do that so so many times. Yeah, and he's doing exactly that to just tidy things up here. Yeah, I like this. And as this game goes on, Zyrus has got to start thinking. Oh no, uh, you know, max mana for the. Uh, yeah, for I think he's. Uh, just every card that's going to be drawn could be Asharash. I've learned not to read Hearthstone players too much from how they look because they often look different how they're performing. But I think he's kind of thinking about the next game here. Yeah, I mean, still, still got a chance though. I mean, has the option of just torching face and just saying, "Okay, I'm in," because you, uh, you see, a can't attack next turn, and you've just seen a lot of removal. Oh, he's going for actually removing your Sarah, okay. This that is kind of Blast, just pointing out he kept that back when he yeah, could have yeah, done yeah. one more damage earlier, much earlier match. And that's now allowed to kill Asira exactly. So that one point of health that he kept from turn two, sure, it's not going to win in this game. Yeah. But it's helped him kill an Asira, which he wouldn't have been able to otherwise kill. Yeah, and I think you could, uh, <laughs> this game's summed up by the fact that when your opponent's playing Hyper Ramp Druid and they ramp, and then you're playing a fairly aggressive deck and you only have five drops from turn one, probably going to lose. It doesn't really work out for you too often in that way. And also when your opponent's playing loads of huge minions, and they just get a 7-6 for no reason, yeah, why that not tends to help as well. Take a free 7-6. So Zyra's just going through the motions now, and he's correct too as well. He can Arcane Intellect into Arcane Intellect, into something, into... Yeah, he's given up now because he drew a Frostbolt. Yeah, there wasn't going to be too much more that Zyra's could draw those. Cards like Tome might have done some things, you know, just to refill yeah, the exactly. hand, but that was pretty much it. You see the draw, it's Frostbolt. Not going to be enough, especially because Oskaka's hand was relatively large anyway. He's had like four or five cards in hand and a huge minion that there was no answer. Yeah, and we don't even know how many huge minions are in there still to come as well. Yep, uh, so Oskaka does get a game with his Ramp Druid. Not the most common deck we've seen, but, you know, he's still got to take two more. Yeah, if he's going to win, we're going to see a lot of this Ramp Druid if he's going to get through to tomorrow. Yep, so we are going into the next game. Players are ready. It looks like it's going to be a Druid Mirror, and I'm pretty sure, just seeing Power of the Wild there, that Zyra's is going to be playing the token style of Druid versus Oskaka's Oh, there's ramp. a Savage Combatant. Yeah, and there's a, I think there's an Aviana there as well. No, I mean on, um, on Zyra's side. Oh, is Zyra's playing like Beast? beasty looking. Oh, is druid. he playing Beast tokens? Sure. Looking that way. Well, we haven't seen him on, on yeah, yeah. camera. We haven't had any like updates given to us, so... Yeah, we deliberately keep away so we don't spoil it for other players when yep. they don't get the deck lists. Of course, and, um, Oscar. and yeah. Skaka's opening hand is not too great. So this is kind of the opposite of what happened last game, where he has a, a, a splash of ramp in form of the Maya Keeper, and some defensive options as well with uh, you know, Fell Rage, of course, and Swipe. But he really needs the Wild Ghosts or the Innovates. I think the Wild Ghosts are worth more than the Innovates in this deck, unless you're innovating into Aviana. Right, because you're playing so many big things. Yeah, you're just more than one use the of that Wild yeah. Ghost. Exactly. So it's going to get you more than two mana innovate. You get to see that burst, but you don't really burst until turn six or something. Yeah. Anyway, though, we're going to see a Barnes next turn, possibly. Uh, no, we'll probably see Ramp Acti next turn. We're going to see Barnes soon, though, which is always exciting. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it all depends on what uh, Oskaka really wants to and how highly values this uh, Violet Teacher. If he wants to 
get just minions on the board that might actually challenge it or just go directly for ramp. And it looks like Oskak has picked ramp. He could have played Barnes and just hoped to sort of high roll it and say, you know, this is a big threat you need to deal with. We and might see Barnes into wild growth next turn yeah, if the position isn't to too horrible. Yeah. Or he may just see a swipe, depending on exactly what Zeros do. Zeros is playing Anixia and Savage Combat in the same deck. Yeah, so now I'm leaning back to this is just being token, except and you Zeros like Savage. And Zeros being because yeah, you like yeah. Savage Combat. Yeah. I think that's something that Zyrus does quite a lot. He actually it takes a deck and then just puts his own slant yeah, with a few very cards. Much like, so. He does a lot with Zoo. Uh, I've seen him do like some cool road decks, I think, and like Pirate Warrior decks back in the day as well. So he has um, definitely has his own style. Yeah, people watching, I mean, you've seen a lot of Zyrus' decks without knowing it, but the one he's really known for was the very aggressive Zoo that came out about three months ago with Soul Fires and stuff, right at the end of the, the pre-Whispers meta. And he did incredibly well with that. And people started taking that to massive tournaments after they see him playing. It's like they just preferred it. Yeah, so really uh, cool slant on the list. And now Oskaka, now, now he can get going. Now he's starting to have options as he yeah. moves on to the seven mana turn. And kind of all the options he could want. I do kind of just like Barnes into Fell Rage to kill the 4 4 though. So if you Barnes into Fell Rage, then your next turn's a little bit icky, but it's not too icky. Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, you could just make a 510 and see what he does about it. That's another option here. Yeah. Just straight up, here's a 510. Deal with that. You'll probably have to use your minion. Then next turn, uh, next turn then gets a bit messy. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. I, I always think in the Druid matchup, because it's very difficult to, for removal and to keep the board clear if it gets stacked up. I always maybe like favor, you know, just removing any minions on the board while yep. you can. And he's actually decided that he wanted to nourish for mana here. He's going Aviana um, into it. Because uh, he's so heavy in the deck, then he's just so I don't need three more 10 drops. Yeah, it's well, he, not he can Aviana into any of his other minions. Yeah, things are going to get really silly. I'm guessing... On both sides, by the way, but more on Oscar's side. Yeah, I'm guessing if he goes for the Aviana, he's going to go for the Ancient of War just to protect Aviana. Because then he can just play whatever he wants <laughs> the, the following turn. And is there any actual removal? There actually is. He can swipe into Living Roots to kill off Aviana. Just draw an extra card every turn with this yeah, Zero yeah. now while we're at it. While simultaneously threatening 9 damage and, you know, I'm going to play Ancient of Wars and Bards. This is... This is silly. It's kind of crazy. Although the option now of, oh, he can't play Ancient of War and Living Roots. Oh, no. This is not good. So you can throw the Fandral away to trade with, like, Living Roots first, play Druid of the Claw, and then f trade Fandral in. But anything other than that, I feel like, doesn't put enough on the board. But you cannot leave Aviana up. You, your opponent's hand could be all, like, Top curve minions <laughs> could just fill the board with 10 drops for all you know. So that makes a decision. You've got to leave a zero up. Yeah, which, of course you do. And when you decide you've got to leave a zero up, you just go, oh. okay, I'm going to leave everything I mean, up and okay. I'm going to try and kill you. Cyrus is going for the small Clive and really relying on the fact that Oskaka won't be able to deal with this board because that is a 10 10. Yeah, it's, it's literally, I don't think I can deal with this board well enough to win anyway. Yeah. So I'm just going to do this. And I know it's a long shot. You know, you know but it's better I, than a 7 mana 10 10, mind it? Uh, six mana ten ten. Oh, one mana ten ten. A one mana ten ten. Yeah, it just plays Fandral and it's How a casual. There's a one mana ten ten. Yeah, I mean, sure. It's not a problem. You just wrath it and go. Yep. This is crazy. We don't get to cast Aviana too much, but the sheer. Amount, I mean, one mana can. Why not? Oh, only a Fandral. If you have two Fandrals, does it double up the choices? No, but here's ten one, times four. Here's a one mana ten ten. <laughs> Using your opponent's Fandral just to try and encourage him Even to play your Fandral. So, is there any way ever that Zeus can win this game? Uh, can he get equality? Is the question <laughs> from anything in does, the whole of Hearthstone. Hang on, does Mulch. No, he doesn't have the damage, right? The game's over. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I was thinking, like, does Mulch change anything? And I realized no, because the 10 10 dies, like, straight away. So, that's pretty much going to be the game locked up. There's nothing that Zyrus will be able to do here. There we go. Just having the, the game just catch up there as we saw on the uh, Zaraz's hand that he'd actually conceded, just catching up on a kind of screen. Right, so, so two wow. all. Wow. Went for the last it's game. Coming down to this, and Oscarka doing really well with this. Um, I'm gonna call it ramp druid, but yeah. it's far more than that. Oscarka ramp druid, world champion ramp. 
that's what we're talking about. But yeah, it's really impressive though because it's a deck. Even though if you you know, as we mentioned at the beginning of the series, a few of the like top pros have given it a whirl, but Oskaka's actually you know put it on the line here, and everyone's been favoring Token Druid of some aspect, maybe a Splash of Beast Druid as right. well. But Oskaka just going for the ramp, and you know what? It looks like it's doing okay. And Zyra's, as we've mentioned before, last hero standing. You do not normally pick your worst deck to go against. Right. Although 2-0 up, maybe you do. Maybe you just pick your worst deck because you're like, oh, well, worst case, I'll play my best deck last. Sure, we don't know. But Hunter's always a deck that can... It's kind of a deck that can win against anything, can lose against anything. That's really a cop-out from a caster. But seriously, that's exactly how Hunter is, right? It's got... If it curves out, nothing beats it. If it doesn't curve out, it kind of beats itself. Yeah, it generally depends on how it's built as well. So you normally bring Hunter to to win the control matchups. Yes. Because they just normally can't deal with the consistent damage output combined with double Call of the Wild and High Mains. Like, High Mains being like notoriously one of the most difficult minions to deal with in the game. Uh, and we'll see how it, how it works for Zyra's though, because one of the things you have to try and do in this matchup is get as much damage to face with the minions and then hold cards like Kill Command Quick Shot to finish because mm -hmm. you don't have the power to hit through the taunts. Like, uh, you, you, know, you have to just rely on the hero power and then just burn from hand, which Hunter really only has like four. So he has one of the key cards in his hand, which is the Houndmaster, but he needs a beast to stick, and he hasn't got a two drop at the moment. That's what that's what Animal Companions fall in the. It's fine, your Animal Companion Huffer. No, no damage from Oskaka to kill it. Straight into Houndmaster. That's that's how you play Hunter. I'm so glad people can't see me right now, just fail fishing. But that's yeah. Fine. Um, and Oskaka just instantly challenging the board. No two pick up there from Zeres. And Oskaka with this hand that should be able to keep him alive for some time. Looking at an okay spot early in this game, but there's a long way to go. That, you know, Zeres hand is far from dead. Yeah, I mean, Oskaka is more than like, I was going to say, depending on what this draw is, more than likely going to Raven Idol to try and get some ramp. Unless he draws ramp, which he did. <laughs> so he's yeah. just gone into the innovate into well, He can't get his charge because he's got it in his hand. That's, yep. that's a blessing. But there's a lot he can get. And there's a legendary casual rag. Sure, why not? Zyrez, even smiley, is just like, you know what? Okay. Quick shot is. Oh, that was huge, actually, because yeah. the, the only sort of shining light at the end of the tunnel when Barnd is played against you is that the it's minion a one, is a 1-1. One, one. One. Yeah. So if you have any damage, you can just kill it. You take oh. the 8, but fine. <laughs> oh. Nourish probably here is Yeah, why not? Third. Nourish, play Yasharad's uh, late Also, Force of Nourish is not too terrible either. But yeah, it takes the Nourish as expected. The, the problem here is in, the, in this match, like, Zyrus needed the minions and needed the pressure. But Oskaka's ahead. On minions, yeah, it's like mean, on turn three, as as a huge ramp druid, like it shouldn't normally work like this. When the control deck is beating you down on turn yeah, three exactly. and four, you are in a world of pain. Um, Zero is going to is going to get um, a beast to stick here with the with the wolf, most likely the infested wolf. I think the play is to roll her uh, That's good. Enough. Nisha kind of does the job as well. It's more open to remove, although as we can see, swipe is in the hand for Skaka, whereas it is. If it was at least Huffer, he could just kill the minion and call it a day and say, right, reset. You probably won't have a fall drop because I think it's pretty much Barnes and Maya Keepers in yeah. the deck. That's it. Yeah, Oskaka, we've been saying it all day about Druid, spoilt for choice again. And the pro players, the best players in the world, they love to be spoilt for choice. Yeah, I'm just thinking if you coin Nourish into Ramp and then Hero Power trade the Misha, but I, he's not got anything to ramp into, so I actually just like the swipe, get the value from Barnes. I just said, beating down the, the Hunter here, it's crazy. The Hunter's on 15, and there's nothing that you can really do yeah, about it at the going, moment. And just, he's he just knows getting killed. What's coming next is not pretty. No. <laughs> like, he's oh. Just, he's getting, oh, my goodness. Okay, that doesn't change anything now. Uh, it changes things next. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next exactly. Turn. Next turn, he can just play a Shirage, which... Yeah. I really like... I mean pretty sure nourished into ramp hero power down the two and these guys are this is where it's important they played earlier today things like hunter's mark he will know he'll have a fair well, at least a, a, a good guess deck. whether it's in the so list. he will know whether 10 10 is a good play or a bad play just from previous games 10 10 is never a bad play when it draws you a minion of your high ramp deck sure Oh, okay, he's going for the Mark of the Wild. He's not bothered about hero power and just making Barnes bigger and more awkward to deal with, actually, because now it's one damage off yeah. clearing. Who's and one damage is something Hunter struggles to do a lot of the time, unless you have Unleash. Who's the Hunter now? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Kill Command used to actually help clear this up. Retaining the minions and now 
Zyrus is just like, right, please have nothing. <laughs> but the odds on him having oh. nothing. Oh, and he's Oscar, got, for he's me, please everything. innovate Yasharaj. There we go. Are we going to get to see this at least? But... <laughs> okay, Yasharaj, what are you giving us? Probably today? another Ragnaros. He's already had one. Why not have another? Ooh, look, I love the effect. Sylvanas, sure. Yep, that should And now be. there's just not a lot, especially because it's Sylvanas. Even if there was a wall put up, you could steal. And that is going to be the game off the back of Oskaka's Ramp Druid. He is going to go into the top eight, beating out Zyrez. So how did you enjoy that set, Lothar? Because that was kind of crazy. Pretty weird match, I would say. First yeah. of all, Oskaka missed lethal in the Warrior game. He had a swing with his weapon, and he just didn't do it. Oh, wow. Did I, we down, that? I saw he was down to two life, and I was wondering if we had missed a lethal, but he I didn't didn't attack with his weapon. Wow. And he I think he it. held the weapon for so long, I forgot it was there. I knew it was there, but I thought he'd swung. Wow, yeah, nice. Yeah, so <laughs> that was a weird situation. He, he almost got punished by it, right? He had to go back with the reverse sweep with the with the druid. He did it. I mean, I mean I'm really blown away by the amount of games that, had to, that druid had to pull off. Right? Yeah. And, and uh, Zyrus, I have to say, he is... I think the fastest player here. Yeah. I mean, he's now eliminated, but he was playing like a like real madman. It's I think he was playing very power. well, though. Yes. Yeah, yes. So, uh, so just to reiterate, like, he was playing quickly, but he was playing well. I didn't spot any particular glaring mistakes in his play whatsoever. I think that I think the major problem in this series for Zyrez was the Druid versus Tempo Mage, because Tempo Mage started at five because he just had double as your Drake in his hand for almost the whole game. Yeah. And it's like Happened. you can't just go late against this ramp druid like it would be almost Mr. anything. Two as Hunter. Exactly. I, I mean I was really surprised by the fact when uh, there was the mirror uh, another mirror. Druid versus Druid yeah. match. And uh, Zyrus didn't kill the Aviana. It's like the yeah. big red sign. Your opponent is playing 10 mana minions in your deck. So yeah, I think he you just, just, I think just, just said, look, I c deal with these things. I just can't deal with them. I'm going to make a 10-10. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's like if he has at least two minions in the hand, it's game over. Yeah, I mean, we were discussing it, saying that there was like swipe living roots to just kill it and just say, OK, you'll deal with the, the other minion later. It's Aviana that's the problem. Because if, as you said, even if there's like one minion plus a lot of removal, that's just as bad because they yes. can play the minion and do whatever they want with the rest of the nine mana. Exactly. Crazy. If, if they have two or three minions, that's like basically like 25 mana played in one turn, <laughs> and the druid has no combat magic. Yeah. Apart from Yogg.